Big news relating to Ivan Tony's exit from Brentford. The manager, Thomas Frank, has said that this is likely to happen in the summer. There's a big update as well from Fabrizio Romano surrounding the cost of bringing Ivan Tony in with Arsenal invited now to bid to get the summer deal rolling. Very reminiscent of the Declan Rice situation. Man United also interested as well as the Ratcliffe takeover is so close to being ratified and confirmed. We're delving into that. We're also looking at Chelsea's pursuit of Victor Rosherman because it's interlinked with the Ivan Tony deal. Hit the like button. Please make sure you are subscribing. Let's go. He's the number one priority for Arsenal. We all know this. Ivan Tony is a player they wanted to bring in during the January transfer window, but an asking price of somewhere in the region of £100 million was slapped upon him, partly due to it being January and a seller's market. Also, the injury problems and players at Brentford that had exited for the African Cup of Nations. All of this made it practically impossible for Arsenal. You throw into that as well, the threat of points deductions because of profit and sustainability regulations. It was a deal that just could not be done in January. Whether Arsenal fans liked it or not, that's the reality of the situation. Now, Thomas Frank admits the striker is highly likely to be sold this summer with Arsenal now formally being invited to submit a bid for the player. And from Brentford's point of view, they want as many clubs involved as possible. They want the talks to start early. And generally, we have seen on numerous seasons now, whether it's the signings being done in February, Christian Pulisic, or whether the real groundwork begins around this time of the year, Declan Rice last season. This is fairly typical in the modern day transfer market. Now, what's very interesting when it comes to the pursuit of this deal is Fabrizio Romano's update here that comes via the situation, we, uh, via his uh, exclusive article that he does with uh, Court Offside. He says that Ivan Tony's asking price will be different in the summer, for sure, even before Thomas Frank public admission yesterday. So a lot of people look at Ivan Tony and think he's a 60, 70, maybe 75 million pound striker at best. The feeling was 100 million pounds was far too expensive. Now, for years, football fans have pushed this notion that it isn't my money, so I don't care how much we spend. And there are some circumstances where, and contexts and nuances where that is okay. I understand it. But with FFP and profit and sustainability being such a focal point for the governing bodies of football, teams are being punished, teams are being prosecuted teams are being charged teams are being damaged due to their mismanagement of their finances and if you sell too cheaply and if you buy too expensively you are going to either one run out of money too soon or two you are going to lose too much money not be able to write it off and find yourself with points deductions which will ruin individual seasons or multiple seasons if those point deductions stop you from qualifying for major european competitions as well as stopping you from winning potentially winning Premier League titles. So it's highly important that clubs spend the least amount of money possible on players, no matter how good they are. As a general rule, that is highly important. Anybody saying anything to the contrary, send them my way. We'll get them on the terrace. We'll debate them because it makes no sense to me. Unless there's an exceptional circumstance. It can't be the rule of, look, I know he's only a £70 million player, but let's spend £120 million on him. I know he's only a 30 million player, but let's spend 70 million pound on him. Where, where are these losses going? Where are these losses going? And with the new proposed rules around FFP and, and profit and sustainability, which is going to be a percentage of your turnover only can be spent on player expenses, there's even less room to maneuver when it comes to that. Sticking with this story surrounding Ivan Tony, though, it has been reported here that Manchester United are better placed than Arsenal to strike a deal for Ivan Tony. 
with the B's value at 80 million. Now, what I find really interesting about this is it's it's been announced in the last 24 hours that Sir Jim Ratcliffe's 25% stake in Man United is close to being ratified by the Premier League. The approval could come as early as next week. There's talk that the sporting director and the footballing director have been lined up and they will be announced almost at the, at the same time as the, 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 the deal for Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos gets confirmed. And we know it's going to be confirmed. It's just going through the standard protocol at this point. Some of the reports, and I don't like the suggestion of war chess because they don't really exist in the basic sense newspapers portray them in. But there's talk that Man United could invest as much as £400 million in players this forthcoming summer. Now, nobody really quite knows the investment from Ineos, where it's all going. The, the, the money that's being to purchase the club, where is it all going? The three to £400 million that he's personally investing, where is that going? Nobody really knows. But genuinely, nobody knows. And you also have to remember that spending £400 million doesn't necessarily mean you have to have £400 million available in your budget at that particular moment in time. If you're spending £400 million and that's being spread over a five-year period, as an example, then, then you're looking at a scenario where you only need £80 to £90 million year one to, to, to spend because of amortization. And if three or four hundred million pounds is being invested, that's plausible. Now, of course, it doesn't mean four hundred million pounds is going to be spent each and every single year. We don't quite know where that money is going to be invested in players, but I think a number of experienced individuals is also going to be needed. And it could be exciting times for Man United. So I'm I'm not surprised to start seeing these stories that the likes of Man United are maybe slightly better place than Arsenal, if Arsenal's financial situation is as uh, is 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 as thin as it's being made out to be. This could potentially be the first time in 17 years that Manchester United have seen direct investment from an owner to compensate and help them buy and purchase players. Remember, the Glazers have not invested one single dime, one single penny, nothing, no rupee, nothing. Not one single uh, you know, um, piece of currency has been invested into the football club. So whenever we've had some tight periods because of FFP, We've just had to get by. Now we have someone that's willing to invest money. And that, for me, is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I still personally think Arsenal are leading this race. I still think Arsenal are the leading light in this. Based on what Ivan Tony said, I'm, I'm just going about what the man has said, but I would love to see Man United get involved. I would love to see Man United take this player away from Arsenal. I rate him highly. I think he's a, he's a phenomenal player. And I don't think we need a young starlet. I don't think we need someone that could become one of the best in the world. I think we already have that in Rasmus Hoyland. That man has got absolute magic in his boots. He just needs some experience around him. And somebody like an Ivan Tony as a counterbalance to the inexperience of Rasmus Hoyland, I think could be absolutely brilliant for Manchester United. Now, going back down to London, it says Chelsea are expected to focus a, uh, for, on a deal for Victor Osherman instead of Ivan Tony. So it's a big Ivan Tony story really today, but that's where Chelsea are going to focus. And this is such an interesting update because obviously they're suffering with their own financial problems at the moment. They've got to raise nearly £100 million by the end of June. Some Chelsea fans have absolutely played this down and, and, and believe that the new sponsorship deals, some player sales, some like Lewis Hall, where there's, there's almost £30 million guaranteed at the, in June, they believe they're going to be absolutely fine. And according to a lot of the transfer experts, they are still heavily focused on bringing Victor Osherman into the football club during the, the forthcoming summer. And Chelsea are the team that are most strongly linked with him. According to the bookmakers, are most likely to land him. But he's also a player that is absolutely desperately needed by Chelsea. Not just for his ability to convert chances and score, but the experience that he has. International tournaments, Champions League being one of the best strikers and, and leading the line in a top, top league such as Serie A. This is important for Chelsea. And I think it would also mark the beginning of the, the biggest change at Chelsea that's needed is this ridiculous under 23, under 22 policy, not buying older players, not buying experience. It needs to stop. It absolutely needs to stop. It needs to be shut down. And there needs to be a good mixture. It's great to buy young potential. It's great to go and get the en en Enzos, Caicedos, some really highly 
talented young players gusto at right back, but that has to be again counterbalanced with experienced players with know-how that are just older, that have been there, that have done it, that have worn the t-shirt. This is absolutely imperative for Chelsea getting anywhere near back to the peak of their powers. So look, Ivan Tony, Chelsea don't seem to be overly focused on that. Arsenal, Man United seem to be as of right now. I want to get your opinions, though, that they matter more to me than anything I've got to say, anything the media's got to say. You are the football terrorist community, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Until next time, take care, goodbye, God bless, and we'll see you all again soon. Peace.